What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion 10 tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to start a series talking about the new features contained inside of the newest version of Lumion, Lumion 10. So in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the displacement mapping that's been added and how you can use that to create more realistic materials. I will be making more videos about the rest of the new features contained in this version. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you're subscribed on this channel so you can see those videos come through. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is one of my favorite new features contained inside of this version. So basically what it is, is this a new kind of map contained in the materials that can make your materials look a lot rougher and more realistic. And so they do that by displacing the actual geometry contained inside of your materials. And so basically the way that a displacement map works is we've talked before about bump maps. And so what bump maps do, and if I turn displacement all the way down on this paving, the bump map or the normal map is going to simulate bumpiness on a surface, meaning it's going to simulate the way that light bounces off of a surface, which works great for kind of smaller surfaces and surfaces that are further away. But for closer surfaces, when you really get in depth, this still kind of looks like a flat plane um, with uh, material applied to it rather than an actual three-dimensional material. Well, what a, what a displacement map does is it actually displaces the geometry inside of your material. So you can see how as I move this slider, um, like the little... Uh, the little uh, cracks and things like that in this asphalt material actually get moved in and out. So you can see how if I turn the displacement down, the materials are actually, um, so this stays fairly flat, but if I turn the displacement all the way up, these materials actually move up and down to simulate a much more rich, realistic material. And so we're doing that using a displacement map. And depending on the material that we have associated with this, so let's say for example that we went to like an outdoor soil material or something like that, maybe the sand material, and let's go somewhere where we can see it a little bit better. You can see how with this sand material, for example, you can actually displace this so that it has the actual ins and outs of the sand um, showing up in here, making this look a lot more realistic. One of the problems in the past has been that you apply a material like this and it just looks like a flat plane. And so these displacement maps are only available right now in materials that have actually been provided um, by Lumion. So for example, like some materials will have this, like this one right here that has like the sticks and the ground and everything else. But then other materials like this ground material, if you double click in here, you can see it doesn't have a displacement map associated with it. So at the moment, the displacement maps are only available inside of materials that are uh, in Lumion's library. You can't upload your own for right now. That being said, there are a lot of different kinds of materials that have displacement maps associated with them. And so the way that you can find a material with a displacement map associated with it is you just want to look for the little D next in the material inside your materials library. So you can see how when I click on this, this tells me this material uses displacement mapping. So I can actually see that this material has a displacement map associated with it. And so that's how you're going to find these is just looking for the materials that have the little D associated with them. And then when you edit these materials, you can adjust the strength of this effect by adjusting the displacement slider right here. So for example, for this gravel material, you can see how I can make this look really 3D by dragging this displacement slider to the left. So one thing I do recommend is being a little bit careful with these materials. So when you apply these materials, if you overdo this, um, depending on the material you have associated with it, sometimes they can look a little bit weird. Um, so just be aware of what that displacement actually looks like. So if I drag this all the way to the right, it just kind of depends on the material, but just kind of step back from it a little bit and make sure everything is still looking realistic to you. So you don't always need to take this displacement and crank it all the way to the right like this. Um, you can kind of leave it in this 5 to 7 range and things will usually look pretty good. Um, for others, if you want that stronger effect, you can definitely do this, but just be aware of the way your displacement materials look inside of your rendering. So another thing that we've been warned about um, in the Lumion tutorial videos is you want to be careful with the edges by these materials. So like for example, if I was to take this material and I was to apply, let's say maybe a stone material, like this cobblestone. 
So if we take this and we turn the displacement up, you just need to be aware that the edges can kind of look a little bit weird, um, just kind of depending on what you um, what material you have selected. So like for example, this, the top looks really good. It kind of moves in and out and it looks like a cobblestone material, but then you've got this like weird flat edge that really kind of breaks up the realism of this material. So the recommendation we've had from Lumion's tutorial videos is to take something like plants and put them along the edges here so maybe like a piece of grass or something like that so if you were to go to objects maybe in areas where you're going to get really close to this maybe put like a thicker grass or something like that just so you can't see that edge anymore and it's not distracting from your realism so you can see how i can kind of block this using these plants you can get the full feel for the 3d of the material without seeing that sharp edge that just kind of breaks the realism of the immersion right here so the other thing I wanted to do was just take kind of a quick run through the different materials I've seen that have these maps associated with them so that you have kind of an idea of what's contained in here. So one great place to use displacement map materials is using the ground materials. So you can see how when you use the displacement on this, instead of this looking like a big flat plane that you have to break up with a bunch of models, um, you can use like this ground gravel, or if you go into the soil section, there's a number of different ground materials in there that you can use on your ground to make it look 3D. So the rock materials, there are several different rock materials in here. They have this associated with them, and depending on the materials you select, um, these can look these can range from really good to really odd. So like this one, for example, you probably wouldn't want in like a square situation like this because it tiles a little bit or it feels like it tiles a little bit. Um, while some of these other materials like this one don't necessarily look too bad, but they give you this really cool stone look in here. So the displacement on the stone does a really good job of making this look more realistic. So if you wanna create like stone walls or things like that, there's some really great materials in here for doing things like that. So from an outdoor materials standpoint, um, the stones and the bricks that have this associated with them look really good as well. So they're really good for breaking up these different areas. I still like um, to use my lighting to kind of break these up so that you don't see any tiling in here here. I mean, even the really good materials, you can see things kind of repeating. So if you can kind of break this up with your light or with different models, um, then these can look really realistic in three dimensions. So in addition, there's some different like bricks and other materials like that. Um, I really like what the stone material does with the displacement map as well. So there's also some concretes in here that have these associated with them. So the concretes, especially like these plates, this does a really good job of kind of uh, breaking this up so that there's a little bit of an in and out on the plates in between the different concrete pieces in here. So there's some really good looking concrete materials inside of Lumion um, that have these displacement maps associated with them. So there's some metal materials like this rusted metal that looks really good when you apply that as well. So the displacement mapping does a really good job of giving some kind of 3D feel to the rusted areas especially. So you can come in here and that's not necessarily something that needs to be huge. This is an example of one of those where just a little bit of displacement will go a long way. But there's some metal materials in here that have this as well. So obviously the asphalt has that associated with it as well. And then there's also some indoor materials. And I was actually really surprised if you apply like a carpet material and then you use the displacement mapping associated with that carpet material. So like for example, if we go with this purple material right here, this does a really good job of adding just a bit of roughness to your carpet in order to make that look a little bit more realistic. So you know when you deal with a shorter carpet like this, you get a little bit of roughness associated with that that just kind of isn't there without the displacement map. Well, if you add that in here, it just gives you that little extra touch that makes this carpet look really realistic. So some of those fabrics can actually look really good with those maps associated with them. So two other materials that I really like um, these displacement maps on are the stucco materials. So these stucco materials do a really good job of adding depth to those walls. I think that's something, um, just a little bit of texturing to those walls. I think that's something that in the past has kind of subtracted from some realism a little bit, just because you couldn't actually get the roughness feel of these walls, um, where if you use this displacement, you can see how you can get a little bit more roughness, a little bit of actual 3D into that material. 
And then in addition, some of the tiles look really good with the displacement mapping as well. So because they do such a good job of kind of moving the tile out while leaving the grout lines where they are, this can make a huge difference in how deep this material goes and how well this looks, so or how good this looks. So like for example, if I have a displacement all the way to the left, this just kind of looks flat. But if I add just a little bit of displacement in here, all of a sudden these tiles look like actual tiles that I've placed on this wall. So one thing I will note is if you have materials off in your background, like if you're uh, shooting a view from right here and you had a material like way outside the building or something like that, it's probably not going to do you a whole lot of good to uh, to have the displacement mapping turned on in there. If anything, it's just going to make your render times a little bit longer. So I would say I recommend using the displacement maps when you have materials that are going to be close up. But then for materials that are going to be far away that you're not really going to see with your camera, I would say don't bother because all it's going to do is make your render renderings take longer. So that's kind of an overview of the displacement mapping in Lumion 10. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Are you excited about this feature? How do you feel about the results you can produce with it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.